Hey guys, my name is Anna, I hope you're doing well and in this video I wanted to talk about Byredo perfumes once again. This is going to be part 2 of me reviewing Byredo perfumes so if you haven't seen the first one feel free to check it out first before starting with this one. And I'm going to be sharing my thoughts, associations and what type of person I picture when I smell a particular scent. Uh, before we start I wanted to mention that I'm not a professional perfumer so this is all going to be very subjective and I also wanted to share what type of perfume I'm generally attracted to because if in this video I say oh I really like this one I want you guys to know what I'm referring to mostly my perfume taste is very particular I like men's cologne uh, both warm and cold so tobacco leather oud, woody, smoky scents. I'm also a big fan of Chanel 5, which is very polarizing and some people, um, I think you either love it or hate it, there's no in between. But my favorite perfume of all times is Gypsy Water by Byredo that I have right here. I think this perfume is just perfect because it starts off as this fresh morning um, pine needle perfume, like it, it almost smells like men's cologne, uh, but then it transforms into this warm vanilla amber um, type of scent. I think this one is just perfect, so now that you guys know what type of perfume I'm generally attracted to, we can get started. So let's start with Mojave Ghost. This is one of the Byredo classics and it was released in 2014. Top notes are Sapodilla and Amrette. Middle notes are magnolia, violet, and sandalwood, and base notes are ambergris and cedar. It's floral, woody, also powdery, and I notice um, a little bit of citrus. Even though citrus doesn't appear on the chart, or as I call it, the ingredients list, this one is a bright perfume, but it's also calming in a way. It's not one of those perfumes that are very particular and that you would wear on a special occasion. For example, Open Sky by Byredo, I feel like that one is not for everyday use, or well, at least I I wouldn't wear it every single day. It's very elegant and it has um, dreamy flower notes that appear every now and then. And as you continue smelling this perfume, you get a little bit of a mango or peach yogurt and also a little bit of wood, like woody scent. I would say that this one is very sophisticated and it's not easy to label as this like, oh, this one smells like vanilla or something else. So it's uh, not one dimensional. It smells like a warm, fresh day in May. And if we're talking about the time of the day, I feel like this one is like 11 a.m. So you already woke up and um, it's still not afternoon uh, and you're energized and motivated for the rest of the day. I also like the fact that it opens very slowly and it's not stereotypically sweet. I picture a young, elegant lady wearing this perfume. And the word ghost in the name, I feel like it's used very well in this context because this perfume is not one of those intense, aggressive perfumes that stay with you forever. I feel like this one is a momentary perfume, so as you walk past this person, you leave a beautiful whiff behind you. Next up is Oud Immortel, and I really love this perfume. It was released in 2010, and top notes are Limoncello, Incense, and Cardamom. Metal notes are Oud, Patchouli, Papyrus, and Brazilian Rosewood. Base notes are Oak Moss and Tobacco. At the first sniff, it's very woody, um, it's complex, spicy, and earthy. However, it's still fresh and to me it smells like Coca-Cola in a way. It's leathery and I also smell amber. And even though it's woody, it still has that refreshing touch. Um, it's very dark, it's mysterious. And if this perfume was the time of the day, I feel like it would be twilight. Uh, because it's not easy to describe, so it's like in between day and night. And it's definitely a unique scent. Um, it's very complex and I feel like it's not for everybody. When it comes to a particular season, um, I feel like this one could be worn all year long. I would wear it all year long. Even though woody scents are more associated with wintertime and fireplace and all that coziness, I feel like it would work for the rest of the year too. Next up is Bal d'Afrique and this perfume is also one of the Byredo classics and as far as I know it's one of the most popular Byredo perfumes. I've seen it all over Pinterest and Instagram. It was released in 2011 and top notes are Tajeris, Amalfi Lemon, Blackcurrant, bergamot and African orange flower. Metal notes are violet, cyclamen, and jasmine. And base notes are vetiver, amber, musk, and virginia cedar. The first word that comes to mind as you smell it is clean. Uh, but to me it also has like this 
rubbery industrial scent. It's also woody, citrusy and earthy, but it's also sweet, especially as it starts to dry down. To me, it smells similar to the iconic Santel 33. And this scent is very gentle. Again, it's not like one of those aggressive, intense perfumes and it has a certain maturity to it. So I don't picture a young person wearing this perfume. I also get a little bit of pineapple in this scent bouquet uh, and it's very warm soft, uplifting. If we compare this one to Blanche by Bayvedo, I feel like this one is more citrusy and it has a different type of clean. Warm, sunny, citrusy type of clean. Next up is Sunday Cologne. It was released in 2011 and top notes are bergamot, star anise and cardamom. Middle notes are lavender, geranium and incense. And base notes are vetiver, oak moss and patchouli. This is another complex perfume that is hard to describe in a few words. It's fresh and spicy at the same time. It's also quite citrusy and lavender is also very prominent. It's clean, sophisticated and sharp and it also has that masculine uh, scent to it but not in the stereotypical men's cologne type of way so it doesn't smell like pine needles uh, but rather it has like this pleasant warmth underneath um, to me it smells like gin tonic, like a fancy cocktail. It's also quite dry and even though it's called Sunday Cologne, I don't picture someone wearing this on a Sunday barbecue because I feel like it's too uh, sophisticated and too aromatic for that. As it dries down, it also starts transforming into this uh, soapy scent and to me, at times, it even smells like the fairy washing up liquid, but not in a bad way, uh, just uh, the fact that it has that soapy thing in it. It reminded me of fairy. Next up is Black Saffron and it's another favorite of mine. It was released in 2012 and top notes are saffron, juniper berries and Chinese grapefruit. Middle notes are leather and black violet and base notes are raspberry, cashmere and vetiver. This perfume is definitely cold and it reminds me of Tuscan Leather by Tom Ford because uh, both perfumes are quite smoky and dry. I would wear black saffron to a fancy cocktail party in Midtown Manhattan. I just get that nighttime um, Midtown, you know, skyscrapers, balconies, um, cool cocktail party vibe from it. Yeah, I just picture gin cocktails, leather armchairs, cigarettes, people laughing. Um, it's quite sweet and it's um, playful, youthful, and it's definitely a nighttime perfume. Um, it's not as mysterious and as dark as Oud Immortel, for example, but it's also lighthearted. It's not as serious as 1996, for example. It's not as historic, it's more you know, uplifting, fun, and really cool. And as it dries down, it becomes more fruity. Next up is Pulp. It was released in 2008, and top notes are blackcurrant, bergamot, and cardamom. Middle notes are fig, red apple, and tiare flower. And base notes are pralinate, peach blossom, and cedar. This perfume is very juicy, and at the first sniff, you get bitter grapefruit, lime, so a lot of citrusy elements, but then as it starts to dry down, it becomes more sweet and woody. It does smell as the name indicates, so fruit pulp, red apples, and overripe fruit too. I would say that this one is more long-lasting than other perfumes, for example, Mojave Ghost. It has a subtle soapy scent to it, uh, but it doesn't smell like a cotton or laundry. It's very clean and refined. I don't know how to explain this aspect, but it has that a recognizable Bayredo uh, characteristic and when you smell it you know that it's a Bayredo perfume. This scent also reminded me of Kenzo Aquafresh but it's not as juicy and I feel like pulp is more complex and it has many more layers to it. Next up is Rose Noir. It's another perfume that I really enjoyed and it was released in 2008. Top notes are grapefruit and freesia. Middle note is damask rose and base notes are oak moss, labdanum and musk. When I smell this perfume, I picture a fancy theater and you going to see ballet with your significant other. There is also a flower shop nearby, so it smells like you know, these refined, exquisite roses. I also get an earthy scent, and I would even say that it's a little dirty, but not in a bad way. I also smell raspberries, even though they're not listed in the ingredients list, as I call it, in the chart. And this is definitely a special occasion perfume, so I wouldn't wear it every single day. Um, if I was rich and if I were into rosy perfumes, I would combine this one with Young Rose. So, for example, I would wear Young Rose during daytime and then I would wear Rose Noir during nighttime. It's very dark, alluring, it's mysterious and 
as it dries down it transforms into this uh, synthetic scent so at the end it smells like hairspray or like uh, some kind of hair product. I also get black tea from it and I picture a very mysterious person wearing this perfume. They don't reveal too much information about themselves and um, they intrigue you because they're mysterious and you never know too much about them. It's also very sexy and despite being a rosy perfume, it's not the typical uh, grandma rose scent. Next up is Super Cedar. This perfume was released in 2016 and top note is rose, middle note is Virginian cedar, and base notes are Haitian vetiver and musk. This one is definitely more simple than Rose Noir and we can even see that from the list. from the ingredients list uh, from the chart. This perfume is very woody, it's fresh, and it smells like men's cologne. Uh, I feel like it's because of the cedar, and as it dries down you get nice fresh airy notes. It's also another gentle perfume, not an intense or aggressive one. And I've also noticed something unusual about it, so you guys know the Laurel Yenny experiment? Laurel. Laurel. So if you hear Laurel, but then someone says, no, but it's actually Yenny, you can't unhear Yenny and you just start hearing Yenny and you don't hear Laurel anymore. Well, the same thing happened to me with this perfume uh, because as I was analyzing it, I realized that it smelled like pickles and now whenever I smell it again, I just think of pickles. I think it's because the scent is quite green, airy and almost like leafy. I would also say that it smells like a walk in a forest. Um, it's quite powdery too. I would say that it's a good mix of masculine and rosy um, and it definitely has many layers to it. And sorry if I ruined this perfume for you and you just smell pickles now. I'm sorry. Next up is Lil Fleur and the name is so funny to me. Uh, it was released in 2020 and top notes are Cassis, Saffron and Tangerine. Metal notes are Damask Rose and Leather and base notes are Woody Notes, Ambergris and Vanilla. This scent brings out so many childhood memories and at first when I smelled it I even got goosebumps because I thought of my childhood and of going to the Black Sea with my grandma. I don't know what makes it smell like that in particular. It has a powdery lipstick scent to it, uh, it's also quite smoky, and it smells different depending on what you're focusing on. So it's both sour and sweet, and if you think about it being sweet, it will smell sweet. And if you think about it being sour, it will smell sour. However, it still has that leathery base that never leaves you and it's always present. It smells similar to Rose Jam by Lush, however I feel like this one has more powderness to it, which makes it more mature, but then the citrusy elements, the citrusy scents, they make it more juvenile. So yeah, it's an interesting mix of both things, and I really like the way it transforms into this uh, unique, rich bouquet of um, different scents. And now, last but not least, is Palermo. This perfume was released in 2010, and top notes are Petit Grain, Citruses, and Bergamot. Middle notes are Musk and Rose, and base note is Embrette. At first, it smells like bitter grapefruit, uh, lime, so it's very citrusy. It's fresh, it's clean, and it reminds me of a sunny day. It might be because of its name, but I imagine this perfume as a refreshing drink on a hot summer day in Italy next to the sea. This one is quite similar to Pulp, uh, but it's not as sweet as that. Um, I would say that it's. it also smells like Blanche, but with a hint of lemon. I also smell salty air and humidity of this town that's next to the sea. It's not overripe, it's not zesty, um, it's very soft and it's... yeah, it's, it's very cheerful. For me it would be too repetitive to wear every single day, but let's quote Gwen Stefani. Uh, so if I was a rich girl and I was going to Italy for a vacation, I would take this perfume and spritz it all over myself for these few days and then when I go back home I would open it and smell it again and it would remind me of this Italian vacation. Isn't it really interesting how we associate certain scents to certain places and some perfumes when you use them in that city then you smell them and it's like, whoa, this is New York or this is Paris or something else. and. Um, yeah, it's, it's such a cool experience. So this is the last perfume that I wanted to discuss today. Uh, let me know if you would like a part 3. 
of me reviewing Bayredo perfumes. Um, I really enjoy making these videos because um, it's really cool to be able to share my thoughts, associations, and who I picture um, when I smell a certain perfume. I hope this video was useful and you learned something new about these perfumes, but as I always say, it's better to go and smell them yourself because these perfumes are very complex, unique, and you might like the first impression, but then as it dries down, you can dislike it so yeah it's better to investigate it yourself if you like this video consider subscribing to my channel for more fashion and lifestyle content uh, consider following me on instagram and tiktok i'm active on both social media platforms thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one bye bye <laughs>